scalp, it doesn't look to be in super bad shape. But like I say, I'm going to change it because I'm not going to deal with it. Because this rotor is in pretty bad shape. And if I have to go after that, I think I'll just go after it all. This truck had airbags on it back here. They are goners. Don't know if I'll replace them or not replace them or what I'll do. But that's for another day and another time. So I couldn't get any kind of impact gun in here. So I used this to get these off. They're either 20 millimeter or 13 sixteenths. The 13 sixteenths socket fits on these pretty hard. They're coming out and I just got them broke. Now I've got both of these where I can turn them by hand. Take the caliper and mounts off. Okay, I'm gonna take this block off. I got my little sponge right here. This should come out by hand now. Now let's get this in here and stop bleeding. Now we can take the whole caliper and all the parts right off and we'll deal with it on the bench instead of under here. Now it's just the shoes are hitting on this little lip here. They have to come off the top on these because there's a little hook here someplace that hooks that in. So the caliper is off. I took this apart and it all looks good. So I got this piece set up exactly the same as that one. And now I'm putting the shoes on because you have to do that according to everything I've seen before you put them in the truck. Now I got these all pre-lubed with this. Okay, I flipped this rotor around and I'm gonna clean off the side with brake cleaner. Again, because of oil debris, wipe it with a clean rag around. Same thing. I don't know if you can see, but there's oil kind of on that. Bolts are all never seized. The caliper holder is here. And we will spray that off with brake cleaner on these shoes. On these pads. I keep calling them shoes, but they're pads. Make sure you do that because there's a specific way to do these. These guys go right here. Caliper holder is on. These are a little different than the front in that the bolts come out like this. So what I want to do before I bolt these on is lubricate them and make sure that these keep working. So the pads are all lubricated. Everything's done here. Clips are on correctly. Now we need to set this caliper over the caliper holder and bolt it on.
Now these are supposed to be 100 foot pounds and these are supposed to be like 26. They're tight enough. I used this to tighten those other ones up and I reefed on them so I'm not worrying about that. Now it's time to put our block on. Now on these blocks, what I usually do is just take a good sharp screwdriver or sometimes my jackknife and I just scrape all the crap off because there's usually crap on these. And then I just take like 100 grit sandpaper and I just sand them. And you just get them looking brassy in here. Time to put this on. I'm going to wipe this off here just to make sure that there's nothing there. Get the brush washer on. And of course, I have my rag down under there for things I want to People might disagree with this, but I always never seize my bleeders and make sure all the air is out of here. And you can do that by doing this. Okay, one bubble came out. So that's it. We have to make sure our block is not leaking. I'm gonna wipe it off good. It all looks real promising. It looks like it's tight. And that's how you change the rear brakes on a 2007 Dodge Ram. All right, now I've pumped up the brakes on the truck hard as I can pump them. There's no fluid leaking here. I rechecked my front tires. The two uh, brake jobs I did up there, there's no fluid anywhere. So this is good. We got one more side to do. I don't think I'll bore you with that side because you've seen me do the driver's side front and the driver's side rear, and they're all the same. Just remember, always put the pads in the holder first, then the caliper on. All right, it's getting ready to do the oil change on this truck. And I found something that I've never found before on any vehicle I've ever owned. Right here is the oil filter that was on it. See this oil leaking? Now watch this. Takes about 10 seconds and you can see the oil leaking right here. This filter has rusted through from the outside. Now right here you can see my plier indent where I took the filter off. It's right here. It's leaking up here and it's leaking up here as well. I've never seen in all my years an oil filter leak rusting through from the outside and I'm not going to give you a name but it's leaking I noticed that it was leaking when I pulled this truck down here to start on it and I thought maybe the filter was loose but it's not loose it's actually rusted through I can't believe it um, this is the new oil filter here. I've just filled it up with fresh oil and I'm getting ready to go under and put it on. <sighs> okay. That's 
on I checked this filter to make sure it would screw on and that it was right because initially at the auto parts store they gave me the wrong filter all right now I'm going to tighten this up by hand as hard as I can this is a really hard place to get into to do an oil filter so I'm going to have to turn it more than my usual quarter turn here to make sure this is tight so I don't want any leaks that should be good and tight that should not leak and the filter is primed now we put the oil to her I'm back working on this Ram truck and after running it for a short period of time I found out that it has an oil leak coming out of these tubes. So I have to take off all these new brakes I put on, which has a silver lining because they will come right off. I have to pull the axles out of the tube. So I found from experience that when you have this problem, it's probably also the axle bearing out here. So that's what we're doing now. <laughs> 